Hello, my name is Shailesh. This video is one of a series of tutorials for Pine, which is a Python software for modeling and simulating spiking neural networks. For a list of the other tutorials in this series, you can visit abrains.eu slash service slash pine, that's P-Y-N-N. In this tutorial, you will learn the basics of Pine, how to build a simple network of integrated and fire neurons using Pine, how to run simulation experiments with this network using different simulators, and how to visualize the data generated by these experiments. To follow this tutorial, you need a basic knowledge of neuroscience, high school level or higher, basic familiarity with the Python programming language, and you should have already followed our earlier tutorial video which guides you through the installation process. This video covers Pine 0.10. If you have installed a more recent version of Pine, you might want to look for an updated version of this video. Pine is a tool for building models of nervous systems and parts of nervous systems at the level of individual neurons and synapses. We'll start off creating a group of 100 neurons using a really simple model of a neuron, the leaky integrate and fire model. When we inject positive current into this model, either from an electrode or from an excitatory synapse, it increases the voltage across the cell membrane until the voltage reaches a certain threshold. At that point, the neuron produces an action potential, also called a spike, and the membrane voltage is reset. It would be pertinent to mention here that these spikes are infinitesimally wide and they are therefore generally not seen in the data. So you can expect simulation outputs to look more like this. Let's begin writing our first Pine script. In this video, you will see my editor on the left and my terminal and my file browser on the right. I'll be writing code in the editor and then running my scripts in the terminal. You're welcome to follow along. You can pause the video at any time if I'm going too fast or you can just watch. Let's start by writing a dot string Simple network model using Pine. For now, we are going to use the Nest simulator to simulate this model. So we import the Pine for Nest module. Like with any numerical model, we need to break time down into small steps. So let's set that up with steps of 0.1 milliseconds. Pine comes with a selection of integrate and fire models. We are going to use the if underscore cur underscore exp model where IF is for integrate and fire, CUR means that synaptic responses are changes in current, and EXP means that the shape of the current is a decaying exponential function. This is where we set the parameters of the model. The resting membrane potential is minus 65 millivolts. The spike threshold is minus 55 millivolts. The reset voltage after a spike is again minus 65 millivolts. The refractory period after a spike is 1 millisecond. The membrane time constant is 10 milliseconds and the membrane capacitance is 1 nanofarad. We are also going to inject a constant bias current of 1.1 nanoamps into these neurons so that we get some action potentials. Note that the choice of these values in this tutorial is somewhat arbitrary with the only intention here being to produce action potentials. Let's create 100 such neurons. In Pine, we do this by creating a population. Next, we tell Pine to record the membrane potential voltage of all these 100 neurons and run a simulation for 100 milliseconds. We now save this file in our project directory Pine underscore project and give it the name script.py. We can now run this in the terminal. We first change into our project directory, pine underscore project, and activate the virtual environment that we had created in the previous tutorial. And now to run our Python file, we write python space the name of the file, script.py. We see that the script runs, it displays the nest banner, but it does not produce any simulation specific output. Let's fix that. 
Pine has some built-in tools for making simple plots. So let's import those and plot the membrane voltage of the zeroth neuron in our population. Remember, Python starts counting at zero. We start by importing figure and panel from Pine's utility.plotting submodule. Next, we extract the membrane potential voltage for all the neurons in our population and save this in a variable named data underscore v. This statement can look a bit daunting. So let's break it down and understand each bit. Here is an illustration of how data is stored by Pine using Neo. The getData method returns a Neo block, which is the top level container holding all the data. A Neo block can contain multiple segments, where each segment can represent an individual simulation run or recording. So segments index zero allows us to access the first segment within this Neo block. Now, each segment can contain a variety of data. Pine labels the voltage signal in the Neo segment as V, and therefore by doing filter name equal to V index of zero, we are able to access the voltage data from this Neo segment. The index of zero is required as the filter method always returns a list, and here we wish to take the first item. And finally, we create a figure with a single panel displaying the membrane potential of the zeroth neuron as a function of time. We set x ticks equal to true to have tick marks on the x-axis and we set the x-axis label to time in milliseconds. We also set y ticks equal to true to have tick marks on the y-axis as well and set the y-axis label to membrane potential in millivolts. We set the figure title as response of neuron number zero. And set annotations equal to simulated with nest. And finally, we invoke the show function to have the figure displayed. Let's save this file again and run the updated script. As you'd expect, the bias current causes the membrane voltage to increase until it reaches threshold. It doesn't increase in a straight line because it's a leaky integrate and fire neuron. Then, once it hits the threshold, the voltage is reset and then stays at the same level for a short time. This is the refractory period, before it starts to increase again. Now, all 100 neurons in our population are identical. So if we plotted the first neuron, the second neuron, we'd get the same trace. To see this, let's update our script to have the membrane potential of the first five neurons displayed. Let's change this. In nature, every neuron is a little bit different. So let's set the resting membrane potential, the spike threshold, and the reset voltage randomly from a Gaussian distribution. To help achieve this, we import Pine's random distribution and NumPy RNG modules from pine.random. Don't worry much about these for now. You will learn more about them in a separate dedicated tutorial. We set the resting membrane potential of the 100 neurons in our population to be picked from a Gaussian distribution having a mean of minus 65 millivolts and a standard deviation of 1 millivolt. Similarly, we set the threshold voltage for the 100 neurons in our population to be picked from a random distribution having a mean of minus 55 millivolts and a standard deviation of 1 millivolt. We do this for the reset voltage as well, having it picked from a Gaussian distribution with mean of minus 65 millivolts 
and standard deviation of 1 millivolt. We update the figure title to reflect the changes we have made and we save our script. Now if we run our simulation again, we can see the effect of this heterogeneity in the neuron population. So far we have a population of neurons but there are no connections between them. We don't have a network. Let's add a second population of the same size as the first but we'll set the offset current to zero so that they don't fire action potentials spontaneously. Let's also record the membrane potential of all the 100 neurons in the second population as well. Next, we want to create synaptic connections between the neurons in population 1 and those in population 2. There are lots of different ways these could be connected. We could connect all neurons in population 1 to all those in population 2. We could connect the populations randomly in several different ways. We could connect the populations randomly but with a probability of connection that depends on the distance between the neurons. Or we could connect the neurons in a very specific manner based on an explicit list of connections. Just as Pine provides a variety of neuron models, so it comes with a range of connection algorithms built in. You can also add your own connection methods. In Pine, we call a group of connections between two populations a projection. To create a projection, we need to specify the presynaptic population, the postsynaptic population, the connection algorithm, and the synapse model. Here, we are using the simplest synapse model available in Pine for which the synaptic weight is constant over time. There is no plasticity. To do this, we use the fixed probability connector of Pine and we set the p-connect attribute to 0.5, which indicates a 50% probability. Next, we create a static synapse type with a weight of 0.5 and a delay of 0.5 milliseconds. And finally, we create the projection itself, specifying the two population of neurons that we have the connection algorithm that we created, as well as the synapse type. Finally, let's update our figure by adding a second panel to show the responses of population 2. As before, we extract the membrane potential voltage of the 100 neurons in population 2 and save this into a variable named data2 underscore v. Since both the panels in this figure show similar kind of data, that is membrane potential voltage as a function of time, we shall have the x-axis label shown only in panel 2 and the y-axis label shown only in panel 1. Finally, we update the figure title and save the updated script. On running this script, we get the expected output with a figure containing two panels. The top panel shows the membrane potential of the first 5 neurons in population 1 and the bottom panel shows the membrane potential of the first 5 neurons in population 2. We can save these figures to disk for viewing later. And there we have it, our simple neuronal network of integrate and fire neurons written in Pine simulated with Nest. If you prefer to use a different simulator, for example Neuron, Pine makes this very simple. We import the Pine for Neuron module instead. As you would hope, Nest and Neuron give essentially identical results. As before, we can save the figure to disk and this allows us to better compare the output of the Nest simulation versus that of the Neuron simulation. Do note the stochastic nature of the simulations undertaken here as these give rise to certain differences. That is the end of this tutorial in which I have demonstrated how to build a simple network using Pine and to simulate it using two reference simulators, Nest and Neuron. Of course, Pine allows you to create much more complex networks than this with more realistic neuron models, synaptic plasticity, spatial structure and so on. 
You can also use other simulators such as Brian2 or Spinnaker and you can run simulations in parallel on clusters or supercomputers. Do keep an eye on the eBrains website for all the latest tutorials on Pine, which will introduce these more advanced features. Pine has been developed by many different people with financial support from several organizations. I'd like to mention in particular the CNRS and the European Commission through the FACETS, BrainScales and Human Brain Project grants. For more information, visit neuralensemble.org slash pine. If you have questions, you can contact us through the Pine GitHub project, the Neural Ensemble Forum, eBrain support or the eBrains community.